I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that updating your home doesn't have to take a ton of time or money. I show people how to get Pinterest-worthy spaces that are just right for them. I love it! Give me one weekend, I'll give you five projects, and you'll have a completely transformed space by Monday. This weekend I'm in West Orange, New Jersey, helping out a young family with their basement. And it's kind of a unique situation because this basement is actually the main entrance to their home. Right now this space is being underutilized. They use it a little bit as a playroom, but mainly its function is as kind of a throughway or a pass-through. So it's the first thing that guests see when they walk in. And right now it's not giving the greatest first impression, but I'm here to change that. You guys, this doesn't even feel like a basement. You said come to our basement. I was expecting like dark, poorly lit. We have all this natural light. I know. It's basically our main entrance into the house. Yeah. Our driveway is in our backyard. Okay. So everyone walks through here and then to upstairs. And we try to ignore this place. <laughs> We find ourselves a lot of times like apologizing for the space. People come in and we're like, oh, just wait, upstairs is nice. Hi, my name is Ryan. And I'm Jackie, and we live in West Orange, New Jersey. And this weekend we have Monica here to help us tackle our basement, which is kind of a mess. It's a terrible light blue color. Uh, the color's gotta go. <laughs> Monica's gotta get rid of that. What do you guys feel like the first impression is saying right now? It's saying, uh, here's a bunch of random furniture we found. Mainly, this is supposed to be a playroom for our son. But there's no like design, there's no feel in here. Right. And no. the blue is just like pretty much as far as you could get from colors I like. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. You know? We did the upstairs first. We took care sure. of the upstairs when we first moved in. Up until last year, we were living in Jersey City. We were living right near Manhattan where we both work. And we have a two and a half year old son, Dillinger. We decided for our son, we wanted more space. So we came and bought a house in the suburbs. If we could have this space be a space where Dillinger can have his friends and they can play, we can also comfortably hang out with their parents. That would be pretty cool. So you have a bunch of different goals and objectives for this space. Yeah. You need kind of almost mudroom functionality. Totally. We need like a drop zone when okay. you come in. It'd be great to have uh, guests stay over too, down here. Okay, like overflow. Yeah, overflow yes. room. We know what we want, but we don't know how to really execute it that sure. well. Sure. What I've done is kind of plan my five projects around those objectives. So each project will hopefully check something off of your very tall order of requests. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, the first thing that we need to do in this space is get all the furniture out. And I have a feeling these couches are going to weigh like a million pounds. I think they This will. one. Yeah. Why are all the old couches so heavy? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. That's all you. I think I them. <laughs> Feels strong? Nope. Feels strong, <laughs> <laughs> By the end of this weekend, I'm gonna create a space that does double duty, works as an awesome mudroom and a great first impression for guests, and also is a really cool playroom for this little guy. All right, guys, you ready to get rid of this blue? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Is it what you're most excited about it, in this room? It kind of is. A yeah. little bit, yeah. yeah. You know that painting isn't very hard, right? You could have done this. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. I really feel like this whole like Smurf vibe that you have going on in here is like the number one downfall of this space. I know it's a playroom in here and we kind of want a cool vibe playroom. So I am going to bring in a bunch of color. Don't worry about that. But I think we kind of need to like neutralize this space. Again. Yeah. All right. First, we need to kind of strip this blue down. So you want to see what I got? Yeah. Yep. Bye-bye, <laughs> Blue. Hello. Gray? Gray. Ooh, very oh, nice. nice. I'll be honest. OK. It, you like it? I do like it a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. OK. It's actually going to work really well with your carpet. So spoiler alert, your carpet isn't going away. But I think you're going to be super happy with it, and it's going to work in this space so much better once we change the walls. Cool. OK. All right. I'm into it. I'm a huge fan of light, neutral paint colors on walls because they create a great soft palette to work from. Hey, you guys are flying. Easy. I can always bring pops of color into a space later with accents and accessories. All right, we're gonna start the biggest build of the weekend. You ready for this? I am ready. All right, it's gonna be me, you, and Matt. And Matt's actually already prepping a bunch of things for it because I won't lie to you, this is a pretty big build for the weekender. All right? All right, what we got? You mentioned how you wanted this to be like an overflow space. So I came up with the idea to add a Murphy bed to your space. A Murphy bed? A Murphy bed. <laughs> what is a Murphy bed exactly? Wait, do you know what a Murphy bed is? Is it like in the sitcoms where like the bed would fall on someone's head? 
Yes, minus the falling on someone's head part. So okay. a Murphy bed, it's one of those beds that you see that can store into the wall. So when it's okay. not in use, it has like doors over it and then it drops down. A lot of times you see it in like loft apartments or things like that. Okay. Cool. Okay. So when we don't have guests over, Dylan Trick could still play in the playroom. Exactly. So I was thinking square footage isn't, you know, it's kind of at a premium down there. So yeah. when you're not using the bed, it'll be stored up into the wall or into the casing that we're going to build for it. Now, it is kind of going to be a more complicated build because I want to not just build the bed that comes up and down, but I want to give you like storage on the side. This project is going to be a combination of from scratch and some things that are in stock. So some cabinetry and things I grabbed at Lowe's, but really the frame of this bed and all the like mechanicals of it are actually from scratch that we're putting together. The first step in this build is to create a box which will act as the frame for a full-size mattress. We're using three-quarter inch plywood cut to different sizes and screwing it together using a Craig jig to keep the screws hidden on the inside. We'll also add a lip around the edge where we can attach the bottom decorative face of the Murphy bed. Let me show you how it's done in super slow-mo. Okay, so this is the basic shape of the frame that we have for the mattress. Yeah. It will perfectly fit it. But what we want to do now is add full sheets of plywood onto either side. Because if you think about it, when this Murphy bed is up against the wall, mm -hmm. we want to look at something pretty and decorative. So I have some cool ideas for it, but we're going to start by just adding plywood. Okay. Should be snug as a bug. Hand it down to Maddie. All right, so we have two stock cabinets, and these are actually like pantry cabinets that uh -huh. you'd see in a kitchen. We're gonna use them for built-in storage, basically, on either side of the Murphy bed. All right, let's take these doors off so it makes installation easier. Nice cabinets, right? These are really nice. What we need to do now is install this left side first, and we're gonna attach it into the back studs. Down here is where the Murphy bed is gonna connect to the cabinets. It's kind of gonna be where the main mechanics are and all the weight and everything's going on. These stock cabinets aren't strong enough to support that. So Matt's created some kind of reinforcement plate. It's just a thick piece of plywood. Basically we need to glue it and screw it. Now we're actually gonna put in what we're calling our pivots. So this flange will be attached to the side of the Murphy bed. There's going to be one on each side. And then this pin will go through the wood and attach into the flange. And the bed will pivot on this piece of galvanized pipe here. But before we secure everything together, we need to grind off the screws inside of the frame so that they're flush to the wood and not getting in the way of the pivoting mechanism. Time for some more of that beautiful super slow-mo footage. Brian, can you come over here? Yeah. Okay, hold that up. All right, your side tight, Matt? Yeah, it's all good. All right, I'm good here. All right, so Ryan, let's actually close this up. Let's pivot it and show you how this actually functions. All right. Ready? And lift. Look at that pivot. Look at that. It's awesome, right? That is really cool. Okay, so this is the basic functionality, but there's still a few more things I want to do. I mentioned I want to make these look like faux doors on the outside. Yeah. We also are gonna add a toe kick. So there's gonna be trim up here so that when it's open, it lays level, not slanted yeah. like we just had it. Uh -huh. And then I also, my biggest concern with the Murphy bed is safety. So I'm gonna add two different locking mechanisms so that you have to be an adult who knows what they're doing to open this up. Okay. So we have a good bit more to do on this. I wanna get this project finished up tonight and then we'll call it a day and then we have lots more to do tomorrow. Cool, it looks great. It really is compact. It looks really great. So this morning, to jump into projects, I'm gonna need some help on my secret project. So okay. every weekender, I have a project that's kind of my secret and I keep under wraps. But 
This weekend, I actually need a little bit of help with it. So I have all this plywood laid out here. You're gonna paint all of it. Okay. Okay? <laughs> it shouldn't take you too long, but I need it to be dry for this afternoon. So you're gonna get to see the paint colors, but you're not gonna know what I'm using it for, okay? Okay. We wanna see what I got? Yes. First oh, one. Beautiful. Oh my God, I love that. It's like an That's, aloe green. Yeah. Color number two. <gasps> Really pretty too. Really oh my pretty, God, right? I love these. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if you like the last one, I think you'll love this one. Beautiful. All right. So five boards. Get them all painted. Let me know when you're done. I got to go inside and work on a build with Ryan. Great. All Sounds right. good. Thanks. Thanks. Good morning. Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Ready to jump into some projects? Oh yeah. I got us all prepped for a project that's going to be kind of focused on your mudroom. All right. All right. Cool. So this area is kind of where you guys had your coats and hats hung anyway. Yep. I think it makes logically the most sense to keep this the mudroom area. Yep. But we're going to do it in a way that kind of defines this area as a mudroom a bit more than just a coat hook. All right. <laughs> what we're actually using is peel and stick flooring. And it goes on the wall. On the wall. <laughs> yeah. So All right. definitely thinking a little bit outside the box, but what I love is that this looks like wood, okay. but it's also water resistant and super easy to install. Because this flooring is meant to be installed on, well, the floor, the adhesive backing alone won't hold these tiles up on the wall. So we're adding some decorative tacks to help secure it into place. They'll also fancy up each tile a bit. Win-win. To cut it, we're just using heavy duty snips. Super easy. All right, so take a step back and check this out. I think it looks pretty dang awesome. Yeah, it looks great. I know you thought flooring and the wall seemed a little kind of crazy at first, but yeah, you're, are you it liking does. it? Yeah, I am liking it. The, the nails like add like a texture to it, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. We've made it look great, but now we need to layer in functionality. So we're going to put some hooks right along here. And instead of leveling, we're gonna use the line kind of that the planks created, because that'll look the most level. All right, so that is the last of them. This is half of your mudroom. How are you feeling about it? It looks great. It looks way better than before. So we're gonna do the exact same treatment that we did here with hooks and the flooring right on this wall. All right, I call hammer. You call hammer? All right, I'll do all the cuts. All right, let's carry this over here. Pop this down. All right, cool. So the final project you're gonna be helping me with is focusing on this area underneath your stairs. A lot of times in a basement, the under stairs area is either closed off, total wasted space, or open like yours, but again, kind of wasted space. Right. So what I wanna do under here is create a little desk area. Oh, I love that. Really? Yeah. So this oh, is cool. gonna. This is actually like a stock kitchen cabinet, okay. but it has drawers and some storage. We're gonna use that as the base to build off, and basically we'll add a desk top that goes all the way over onto there. Cool. You like that? I love that, yeah. So I was thinking it'll kind of be for Dillinger, but honestly we're gonna build it at adult size so that if you guys wanna use it, you can as well. I love that, that's so cool. Matt actually, you can kind of see back here, he already cut out oh, cool. a tiny bit of the baseboard. Cool. That's important to do because it keeps this level. Otherwise there'd be a gap between, so he just used a Dremel to kind of cut out a little bit of the baseboard. Cool, so it's, it's flush. See, yep, yeah. it's totally flush against there. We're running a ledger board at cabinet height across the wall. This will support the desktop. So this final piece that we're gonna put on for support, you can see that it's angled here. Okay. I had Matt cut that at a 45 degree angle because of the angle of the staircase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it'll sit flush. Okay. All right, let's put this top on. So this is a project panel from Lowe's. They come in a ton of different sizes. All I had Matt do to kind of prep it was add a little trim around the edge because I just okay. wanted it to be a little bit thicker for this desktop. Cool. Okay, yeah, so it's a good weight. We're gonna slide it down. See how our supports hold up. All right, you feel good down there? Yep. All right, I'm gonna attach it up and underneath with a couple screws. Cool. Next part 
is going to be adding these white floating shelves. So cool. I want to put a couple of these going across here and then maybe even one more up here. Two really important things when hanging shelves are making sure they're A, level, and B, secure. If you can't find a stud to screw into, definitely use wall anchors. All right, now it's time for part two of my secret project. This morning, Jackie helped me paint all of these plywood boards. She doesn't have any idea what I have planned for it. What I'm using it for is to create a climbing wall for Dillinger. It's gonna be in the shape of kind of a mountain range across their wall, and he's gonna be able to literally scale the wall. They said he has a lot of energy, so I think this is gonna be perfect for him. First step is gonna to be to draw out my mountains, and I'm not gonna have like an exact measurement or science to this. I'm just kind of gonna freehand them, make sure it's straight using a level, and then I'll come through and cut my mountains out. All right, you literally have to move mountains on the weekender. <laughs> this is one of my big mountains. I'm gonna combine it with like big, medium, and small, and then stagger those on the wall. But I need to mix in some of the other colors, so lots more cutting to do. All right, now that these are dry, I was able to start attaching them to the wall. There's one really important thing here, and it's that they have to be attached into studs on the wall. Because these are heavy and large, you wanna make sure that they're never gonna fall off the wall. All right, so I picked up these climbing wall handles at Lowe's. They're in like the playground department. And I'm going to secure them with the screws that they came with, but first, a little tip is it's really great to use painter's tape to figure out the spacing. So for a toddler, their, I looked this up, their average um, arm span is like 18 inches. So we wanna keep them all about 18 inches apart. Okay, and we're only gonna put the climbing handles on the plywood because that's what's gonna make them super secure. We're not gonna put anything into the drywall. So that's pretty much the basics of one mountain. I have multiple climbing rocks. They're all pretty close together. And now I'm gonna continue that along the range, but I'm not ready to show you that. I'm gonna leave it as a cliffhanger. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I think you guys are barely gonna recognize this space. I think it is gonna make an awesome first impression for your guests. So, open your eyes. Oh my God, are you Whoa. kidding me? <laughs> what oh is God. this? Oh my God. <laughs> oh, they're mountains. <laughs> are you kidding me? I love it. Oh, wow. It's literally like not the same space. Is this a climbing wall? It's a climbing wall. Are you wall? kidding me? Oh all... man. Dillinger is gonna He's freak gonna love it. out. He's gonna love it. <laughs> So that is what you were painting the plywood for. To make these mountains. To make They're mountains. so cool. Uh, so we put, basically I it's plywood it. mountains that we attached into the studs. So they're really, really secure. And then put all the climbing rocks on there. So he can like go back and forth and even got him a little safety mat there, oh the whole God. thing. So. Murphy bed looks awesome. Oh the legs look great. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I can't even get over it. It's completely, completely Dude, different. This looks awesome too. Oh my God. It's like a whole nother space we've gained. I know. Look Whoa. at this. Look at his little shoes. <laughs> <laughs> They're it's the so cutest cute. thing ever. Oh they my look God. so good. It this is like, amazing. Look at the animal heads. <laughs> like, welcome to our den. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is like a real playroom now. Yeah, it's a playroom and yet I feel like it still feels pretty sophisticated. Like totally. you can have guests on the bed. Yeah. Absolutely. And it feels like a mud room. And we even throw in like an office space too. I know. I know. <laughs> it's insane. I feel like we just gained like two new rooms. All right, let me show you how this thing works. So here's the secret. Open the top here. That's amazing. What we'll do, Ryan, come down to this end. Grab it with two hands, it's pretty heavy. Okay, lift up, okay, to go all the way oh up. God. And then you're gonna take your bolt, go through the side of the cabinet, 
Oh, and I you see. lock it. So you're gonna spin it all the way in. And then we made the outside look like faux doors. That That's is awesome. So there's, it's literally <laughs> just say. the underside of the bed. <laughs> but when you're here, you're like, it looks like a huge built in unit. Yeah. And then, like, this is just extra storage, too. Yeah. This is so cool. Exactly. Now you can kind of see still a ton of open square footage in here. It feels so much bigger than it did before. Yeah. Yeah. It it's really It's crazy. Does. And meanwhile, it's like a Swiss Army knife with everything I can do in here. It's amazing. This room is the Swiss Army knife <laughs> room. So I like that. <laughs> this is great. Neat, it's, right? It's so yeah. cool. All right. Well, I'm thrilled that you guys like it, but I want to know what Dillinger thinks. You want to get him? Yes. Absolutely. All right. Let's go. You ready to see Dill? <gasps> What's this? What's that? Look at it. <gasps> There's a bed. Do you bed. like it? What do you think, dude? This is your new room. What? Look at that bed. You want to go on it? How Get cool. comfy. Oh. Shoes on. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. It's good. <laughs> this is a playroom, Mom. <laughs> yes. Jumping? That is <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Buddy, isn't this cool? Is this cool bed? Hey. Dill, what do you say to Monica? What do you say to Monica for your new playroom? Thank you. You're you saying welcome. thank you, the weekender. Thank you, weekender. You're welcome. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, how you climb. That's how you climb. Yeah. Put your foot up like that. It's just like at the yeah. playground. And then lift up. Oh, oh. Give him a boost, Dad. Oh, oh, good <laughs> job. You're climbing mountains. <laughs> Can you touch the top? Awesome. You touch the top. Yeah. <laughs> nice job, dude. Guys, I hope you like this makeover just as much as this family did. Leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite part was. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to the Lowe's YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of The Weekender. This weekend, we're helping a family with their outdoor space. Have you guys heard of kind of a she shed? We are gonna give our own spin on this and make a we shed for your girls. The Weekender is coining a new term today. We are calling this the we shed. It's gonna be one epic space, so much better than a mini playhouse. Oh my gosh! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that looks awesome!